Welcome everybody, uh, two o'clock sharp and we have uh, 110 participants and growing so times to time to start. Thank you very much for being here on behalf uh, of the European Training Foundation and of the Creating New Learning Initiative within the ETF. This is uh, one of the many webinars we organize uh, uh, within uh, our community of innovative educators. Uh, and uh, this specific webinar is very close to my heart, actually is very, I, I believe very important because we, we will tackle the issue of uh, digital literacy for educators. We all know how much uh, this is important, especially after COVID and after experience, but also in everyday teaching, it's uh, becoming more and more important every day. And we are looking at this uh, issue of digital skills and digital literacies from a specific viewpoint today. That is the viewpoint of critical digital literacy. So what it means to become a critical digital educator in contemporary societies. So we will be hearing about uh, uh, privacy, ethical use uh, of uh, students' data, and all these things, which uh, again are getting more and more important in uh, our work, in your work, actually in the work of every educator around the globe. Uh, let me just uh, remind you that uh, you can choose uh, your language of interpretation. This uh, webinar is uh, interpreted in Russian and in Arabic. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I hope I'm not speaking too fast uh, to make the life of our interpreters easier. And um, should we, can I see the agenda or I can briefly go through the agenda? Basically this, uh, this webinar will have a first uh, presentation by Alessandro Brolpito, a colleague from the ATF, who will introduce us to the theme by, by presenting what the European Commission is doing in this field. Then we're gonna hear another presentation on a specific approach to critical digital literacy that approaches it through design actually, which is a learning design, which is a, of course very important because it starts from the very beginning. Here you see the agenda. And then we are gonna, as usual, go into a more practical part with a panel with three educators, one from Ukraine, one from Spain, and one from Italy. They will be introduced later. And here we are gonna move really to the grassroots level, we're gonna hear what's happening in the classrooms, in the daily teaching of these, 
of these uh, educators, these innovative educators. And then we are going to close, I promise, sharp by 3.30 in one hour and a half. I see we are about to touch 150 participants, so it's a rather big group. Because we are so many, uh, we will have, of course, time for question and answers, but uh, no, as we normally do, please ask your questions uh, during the presentations in the chat. We will make sure to gather them and to ask them to our participants. And if at the end we are going to have some time, we will try also to uh, hear the voices of uh, some uh, participants. But for sure, every let's say our our commitment is to reply to any to every single question or idea through through the chat okay i think uh, my introduction is done and during the during the call i will also i will also um, post the link to the community of innovative educators so to be sure that if you are not registered there you can register into the etf open space that is the house of the online community so that you can uh, be kept informed about the next webinars and about the next uh, developments of this uh, of this very active community as shown by by today's webinar before giving the floor to my colleague alessandro i would like to invite you to feel to feel a very very simple uh quiz let's say uh, and the question is very simple is do you know what critical digital literacies are do you understand this concept? Is this something that you have been exposed to? Do you know what do we mean? You see a, a link in the in the chat, and uh, by clicking on that link, uh, you can just select yes or no, and this will help us understanding uh, the starting baseline of our of our audience today. So. I will leave a few a few seconds for all of you to reply. I see in real time that the majority of you seems to know what we are talking about. And then at the end, we will see also if you know more than before or if you still have open questions. This is a, is a very, I would say, a contemporary issue. Right? It's not something, uh, it's, it is a, it is a, a a theme which is so important, but where let's say research is uh, is appearing more and more in these days, but it's a rather new issue. So feel free also to say no, huh? no, no judgment here. So please uh, uh, re keep on responding to this question. If do you know what critical digital literacies are? And uh, I see some people who want to speak. Please uh, use the chat if you have uh, questions or if you're having problem. I think everybody is hearing me. I see, I see no major problem. So if somebody, I think, Dia, you cannot hear, um, I think the problem might be at your end. Okay, so interesting enough, we have uh, around 50 responses and uh, the majority is yes, but still. Uh, almost half of the responses don't know what critical digital literacies are. So because of this, I'm uh, asking all the speakers of this, of this uh, webinar actually to, to keep it simple because the issue is can be very complicated, can get very deep and very complicated. <clears throat> but uh, keep in mind that as usual, uh, our, our um, audience is composed both, both by innovative educators and by educators who want to know more about innovation. So I think this is enough for now for the, it tells us something about how much we know about the issue. So I think it's good to have both knowledgeable people and people who want to know more. I will shut up now and give the floor to Alessandro Bropito, my dear colleague from the ATF. Alessandro, the floor is yours. Thank you, Fabio, and uh, good afternoon to everyone uh, uh, from uh, the European Training Foundation in Turin. So uh, let's say, let's take uh, uh, the most important uh, driver for, for understanding uh, of uh, uh, what we mean for critical digital literacy. Uh, and so let's start uh, from teacher's uh, perspective. Uh, we know that uh, in spite of all the technologies, uh, uh, they are and will remain uh, at the heart uh, of the education and uh, of any education process. So it's very important to start from the lens uh, of teachers. And uh, we had, uh, let's say, sorry, um, 
some of you that already are familiar with the critical digital literacy meaning, uh, but let's start with some example, no? Um, uh, what does it mean uh, to apply critical digital literacy uh, in a lesson, uh, in a classroom? It's about, for example, to raise awareness uh, on cyberbullying. The other face of the coin, it means, uh, in other hand, in other words, uh, to foster a positive and also an ethical use of social media. Um, it's important to raise uh, awareness uh, or, or on fake news uh, or misinformation, disinformation. So maybe during the, uh, the exercise uh, where the working group uh, um, uh, or the, when you give some homework, uh, it's important to highlight and foster to check uh, and uh, use a diverse sources of information to cross check, to raise awareness on the large use of data. The digitalization is creating huge amount of data, but uh, there also behind uh, there are hidden malicious algorithm. And this, uh, therefore, it's important to raise awareness about uh, online privacy before accepting all cookies, for example. Uh, to, to raise awareness about uh, pervasive surveillance uh, and online frauds. Uh, I was, uh, my daughter was just very recently a victim of the epishin attack, uh, and it was, uh, she didn't realize that she was using all day the telephone, but uh, she didn't have the, the critical thinking, the reaction to, to do this uh, and say, no, what I'm doing. And overall, uh, overall, uh, to make sense of the digital transition. So to foster positive practice in the use of technology, in the interest for the good, uh, this is uh, very, very important. And these are, are important uh, elements that we have to keep in mind when we blend the digital technologies in our teaching and learning practices. Now, uh, let's say that, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, rising educator awareness uh, regarding the complexity of using digital technology and social media for learning is uh, key, is definitely key. And uh, this is something that uh, we have to keep in mind uh, as a lesson from the COVID-19. It's complex. It's not just a matter of connecting. There is a strange row on my screen, but does not matter. <laughs> um, this is uh, the definition of, uh, there are many definitions. Here I'm using digital competence uh, and digital literacies uh, uh, as a synonyms. Uh, I know I'm not, it's not really Effect uh, saying this, uh, but uh, I think we can use uh, for this event uh, uh, the two terms uh, digital literacy and digital competencies uh, as uh, synonyms. And uh, this is the definition that is given, uh, let's say, uh, by the European Commission as part of the key competence for lifelong learning. What I highlighted uh, is that uh, if uh, we consider ourselves digital competent, we have to be critical consumer of digital technology, critical users, being aware of the risk that there are behind, even not necessary risk, but for example, do we know that if we search the same word, the same word on Google, we receive a different result of sites, and this is something that maybe it's correct. This is because it's uh, Google is trying to understand what we are looking for, but behind it, there is an algorithm. And what I see is different from what you see. So we need to be critical. Now, the key questions that I would like to with you to elaborate a bit more, not answer because it would be too much. How it's about how we can support teachers and trainers to have this, uh, to develop uh, this critical digital literacy uh, and how it's possible to design lessons uh, where learners uh, are exposed uh, and have opportunity to develop this. So to do this, uh, I, I'm going to introduce uh, a 
a European digital competence framework for educators. Again, as Fabio was introducing, this is our tools developed by the European Commission. Uh, and this is about uh, what does it need to be a digitally competent teacher. So according to the guidelines of the European Commission, uh, a teacher has to be competent in these uh, six areas, uh, covering 22 competencies. Uh, and uh, this framework that I'm going to quickly, very quickly present, uh, include, include a self-assessment tool uh, that is called Selfie for Teachers uh, that allows uh, individual teachers. Uh, so if you are a teacher, you can use it for free and see your proficiency level. It includes many concrete examples to understand where you are and include a progression model. When you run this self-assessment, uh, it offers to you an individual feedback, uh, offering hints uh, on how you can improve uh, your digital competence. But let me say very clearly that it, you don't need to be the top uh, in all these competence area. It depends what you are teaching. And so it's very important to have a genuine self-reflection and understand which area, according to your position in the education and training system, according to your, to your subject, uh, where basically it's important to improve. This is uh, the progression model uh, related to the self for teachers. Now, if you look at uh, what uh, uh, it's like for the languages uh, in the Europe pass uh, from A1 to C2, so is using the, um, the same framework that is used for the common European framework of reference languages and the Bloom taxonomy. Uh, this is a bit technical, but just to say that uh, this is a very international uh, progression model. And uh, I analyze a bit uh, for this uh, presentation how the progression is explained. So the critical uh, literacy, the critical perspective, the critical thinking in, in, in applying and in teaching digital literacies could happen from a level to B1 onward. So this is to say we should target B1 in general to start being really confident and critical in the different competencies that I will briefly refer here in these slides. These are the 22 competencies. Uh, some very, I, we don't have time to go through all, but uh, I like very much, uh, I was part of the development team uh, of, of, of experts uh, working on this, uh, the one uh, empowering learning learners. Uh, that was really, and here I see a lot of benefit of digital technologies, but also facilitating the learning comp digital competence. So, uh, Give me, let me give you a couple of examples of uh, how this uh, uh, framework can support uh, teachers and trainers uh, to develop. Well, uh, um, if you look to the, there is one, uh, these are the three competencies that, uh, according to the framework, uh, teachers uh, should possess uh, in order to create and manage properly the digital resources. And if we look to the selection, for example, you can target to be B1 when uh, I highlighted the text, uh, I evaluated the quality of digital resources based on basic criteria such as place, publication, and user feedback. So I am, I am expected to be critical on what um, I'm making a research, I'm collecting resources for my lessons, but uh, I open. It's it's related to the first slide I presented. You no, know? the important uh, to be aware of this information and uh, um, fake news. So it's uh, this is uh, I know and I evaluate uh, the verb of the evaluation uh, to evaluate uh, highlight my critical thinking, my cri critical review. Another example here we are moving to the let's say the learner perspective, because in the end, uh, as uh, the framework was mentioning in the area six, uh, we aim to develop uh, the digital competence of learners. And uh, let's say this is an example, 
about information media and literacy. So when I teach, I use a range of different pedagogic strategies to enable learners to really critically, critically compare and meaningfully combine information from different sources. And this is uh, associated to the level B2. So uh, it's about, this is very important. So it's the, 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 the framework, uh, it's clearly targeting the critical digital literacies and uh, for, for the teachers and for the learners. Now, let me give you, I'm talking about uh, this framework. As I said, UNESCO developed another framework, so it does not really matter to use this one on another, but it's important to use uh, in order to build uh, digi uh, critical digital literacy. I think it's very good to refer to this kind of tools. Uh, and Selfie for Teachers uh, is uh, free online. Uh, there is a, a great respect uh, of uh, privacy. Uh, all answers are anonymous. Uh, no personal data are recorded. Uh, this is a very important uh, element of what we are talking about for the, for the subject of this, uh, of this event. And is already available in different language, however, can be translated. It's a multilingual system, so it's quite easy to add an additional language uh, if you are interested. And how to use it? It's just sufficient to log in, start uh, the self reflection. Um, it takes uh, around uh, 30 minutes to respond to the question. And you have uh, this uh, report, uh, including graphical elements. Uh, like uh, what you see in the slide. Uh, and you can see an overview uh, where you are more stronger, more confident uh, from a level that goes from A1 to C2. And here you might reflect on which specific competence you want to improve. And you can also download a, a digital badge uh, for this. Uh, here I want just to share very briefly uh, just a set of links. Uh, this is the official web page uh, on the European Commission website where you can register and uh, uh, you don't need to install uh, any software. Uh, you can run it from your smartphone, mobile devices, wherever you are. And, uh, and these are tutorials uh, video that uh, could uh, really offer a good uh, uh, more additional information on, on this tool. So this is, was a really uh, Fabio to highest break uh, and take uh, the perspective uh, of the teachers uh, referring to a framework, uh, um, uh, the framework developed by the European Commission. Thank you for your attention. I hope uh, I provide a good hint and inspiring you. And uh, I, at this stage, I would pass the floor back to you, Fabio. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alessandro. I think it was a perfect uh, overview. And thank you especially for pointing out the link to Selfie for Teacher. Actually, it is a self-assessment tool that uh, I really invite you uh, to, to, to try it out, you know, to, to take half an hour <clears throat> to reflect of, on, on, on what it means, of course, for the European Commission and for these experts who have created this tool. You might find that uh, some of these things are far away from your daily teaching, but you might also find that you don't score so bad. So I, I suggest that, uh, that you, try to, you try to run the, 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 the self-assessment questionnaire. Now, I'm putting myself uh, into your shoes. You are educators, teachers, managers. So all of this makes perfect sense. We have frameworks. We have uh, value-based ideas in this case. We, we, I think we can hardly disagree that we need to be critical when using technology with our students, with our training. But then the next question is how? How can we do that? As Alessandro was saying, we cannot all become super proficient in all these fields because we teach history, we teach math, we teach other things. So is a, we don't want to pass the message that every educator should get totally new set of competence, but there are a few uh, approaches actually which uh, uh, seem to work, which work and which can actually allow you to, to introduce some critical thinking and some, critical, uh, some criticality in the way you work with technology with your students. Now, one of these approaches is, and I'm very curious to hear about it, is to start from design. Actually, as you know, 
the earlier you start with new things, the better it is. And actually starting from the design phase of a course or of a lesson is uh, definitely a good idea. So I'm calling now in uh, Mr. Darren Mandy from the University of Hull <clears throat> to hear about uh, the detect tools. So a practical tool to, to instill critical digital literacy through learning design. Darren, please. Thank you, Fabio. So, um, yeah, I'm Darren Mundy. I'm Interim Dean of the Faculty of Arts, Cultures and Education at the University of Hull in the UK. And I promise I will try to slow down in terms of my uh, speech as we go through uh, this today. So I'm also part of the Detect Project team, which is a large project, and I'll go through the, the partnership uh, in a second. But it really is a pleasure delivering uh, today and informing you about the work uh, we've completed over the previous uh, years on this project. So if I can click. So the aim of the talk today is to talk about why we focused on developing a new framework for uh, teacher education focused on uh, critical digital literacies. I will present the critical uh, digital literacies framework uh, that we have developed. I will then present some resources that link directly into that learning design challenge and that challenge of sharing a uh, good practice around uh, Europe, around how we can develop uh, critical digital, digital literacy uh, skills within our students and uh, within our educators. So, whoops, let's go back a second. So the DETECT project team consists of nine uh, partners from four countries, from, from Italy, from Catalonia in Spain, and uh, from uh, Helsinki in Finland. And those partners consisted of partners uh, who were university partners, but also a series of primary, uh, secondary, and tertiary education uh, partners across across Europe. So the DETECT project as constructed was essentially designed as a trans uh, transnational project exploring the delivery and um, creation of critical digital literacy uh, skills in schools across a range of educational spectrums. It was designed to shape and advance our understanding of critical digital literacy uh, literacies in the school based context. And it was focused or is focused on helping teachers to deliver critical digital literacy within uh, school space through development and collecting together of a range of practical skills, uh, sorry, tools and resources. So just, I know that there's been comments around media literacy and a range of different things. I'll just present a, a couple of, of quotes on here. And we've already had digital competence linked into uh, the previous um, talk. So on digital literacy, there's a, a quotation on here, but we recognize there's a difference between delivering digital competence or digital literacy or across a range of different uh, areas and developing levels of criticality in our students uh, around the, the, the measures of critical digital literacy. So the understanding really for us is that digital literacies, digital competencies are uh, uh, building blocks um, at a base layer and the layer of criticality is focused on how we best use uh, digital literacies to inform our practice, either as educators or as students. So digital literacies uh, uh, can also be recognized as a key aspect to develop in schools um, because our learners are existing uh, within these spaces and occupying uh, positions where they've got to engage with the range of different challenges, for example, that Fabio has just presented. So there's a, a quotation on there in relation to critical digital literacies, just encompassing that engagement that goes beyond uh, the basic competence level. So in terms of why a new framework, there's a range of existing school related frameworks about digital technology, digital competence, digital uh, literacies. Many, all of those existed a few years ago. 
many of those focus primarily on teachers pedagogical practices uh, within uh, with digital technology many of those for our from our perspective were compromises and were selected to prioritize the topics which were regarded as the important ones but for us, there were questions over levels of importance and whether or not there are also some important issues which existed beyond uh, the frameworks as presented. Some of the frameworks also uh, that were present do not focus only on digital technology, but uh, focus on other general competences that go beyond a uh, di digital frame. And some of them in themselves need updating given the uh, fast changing or fast moving a position of digital technologies, especially where they were published before 2010. So for us, we set about exploring the development of a detect framework, which focused primarily on the development of critical digital literacies. And this framework we looked to uh, use to advance our understanding of the changing nature of critical digital literacies, uh, also bringing new trends into the discussion. We looked to reconceptualize the notion of digital literacies in order to look beyond ICT skills, although we do recognize that ICT skills and the discussion of ICT skills will always be present in any conversation around uh, digital competence. We looked to provide uh, or encompass a richer set of critical digital literacies uh, present within the framework, focusing specifically on teachers' professional needs and the pedagogical purposes of those uh, needs and then we looked to provide teachers with a with a practical tool practical tools that can support them with conceptualizing the various dimensions of critical di digital literacies that are also for their students so the framework itself in terms of methodology consisted of a systematic literature review in the area of critical digital literacies focused around that term of criticality and critical digital literacies. Uh, focused on article searches during or between 2005 and 2020 in two electronic databases, EBSCO and the Web of Science. We also included in that uh, process or, uh, as well, policy related documents that, that were not necessarily present within those academic databases. So altogether 143 articles and 13 policy related documents were accepted um, for analysis and terms found uh, within that analysis were structured into what we call dimensions and sub-dimensions. Based on these, a preliminary framework was created, revised and ag again and again. Essentially that analysis and that revision came through our conversations uh, with the teachers that were involved uh, within the context of the project and that went beyond uh, the context of the project as well. The review results formed the basis of the framework, but uh, again, we continue to discuss that uh, through those engagements as well as in-depth uh, interviews. With the final framework, a result of research review and uh, practical findings. So for us, the interesting findings from the research review, which you know, may or may uh, not have been present, uh, in other items or in other places uh, you've explored before. You know, there was a large focus within the articles um, on negative comments such as cyberbullying, sexual harassment, e safety, uh, problems with gaming, et cetera. And there was also, uh, this was also found in information related competences around fake news and those kinds of things. So there's a large emphasis on the, on the negative. There were a few items related to the positive sides of digital technology and the need to develop critical digital um, literacies within uh, those positive spaces around empowerment, around identity, around well-being, et cetera. Although to many young people, those positive aspects are an existing and relevant issue that within our school system, uh, we should uh, seek to develop. We also found that there were new emerging trends which were not particularly covered. So uh, digital, um, digital empathy, civic engagement, or not mentioned at all within that, that um, literature review uh, around ergonomics. So we 
perceived that there was a need to make a future oriented framework, which also acknowledges the importance and positive possibilities of uh, digital literacies. So from that analysis, we found eight key dimensions. Um, so th those dimensions are present on the slide there. We organized those key dimensions into uh, a range, uh, well, into this, this, this graphical model with a range of sub-dimensions. Some of those sub-dimensions are relatively familiar. Um, so for example, technology use, we have a focus on going beyond the basic platform of skills through to uh, developing levels of computational thinking, developing uh, more understanding of how individuals can engage in how to solve complex problems uh, using technology. Data literacies um, were present there as well in relation to the large emphasis that we presently got on uh, big data and the large uh, role that big data and data analytics are playing within the context of society. Information literacies moved through from just a basic uh, understanding of how to search um, web resources and other resources to source validation and verification in relation to critically understanding uh, fake news and uh, you know, fake information on the internet. We had a focus on digital content creation, which doesn't uh, or didn't get much um, focus in the context of the literature within a schools based context. But moving forward, uh, there's a big focus within that area on co-creation and developing uh, projects linked to co-creation in schools. We brought in digital technology, teaching and learning with the schools based context, had a focus on digital citizenship to explore rights resp and responsibilities and develop those skills uh, within students and engage in developing school, uh, uh, developing um, students understanding of civic engagement and a focus on negative and positive aspects of digital well-being and safety, developing those skills in empowerment and developing those um, skills in, the US Embassy. in digital belonging, coupled with those negatives around overexposure and online safety. And then the final um, dimension was focused on digital communication and collaboration, which you'll find as a core component of many of the areas of focus in relation to developing digital competence. But within a critical space, it's really understanding how we can use communication uh, within the communities uh, such that we're, we're viewed positively within those spaces and we can engage positively uh, within those communication structures. So after the framework, so the framework gave us a platform of understanding in relation to the, the types of tools and uh, resources that schools-based uh, educators may need in practice. So we've moved on to essentially deliver two other practical items. So the first practical item was the development of a self-organized learning um, environment for teacher teachers called Sole, and I'll show you that in a second, and the development of a uh, critical digital literacy toolkit so individual uh, educators can find materials directly related to you know, different dimensions of the framework. So the self-organized learning um, tool for, for uh, educators offers a practical overview to the web-based uh, uh, site, uh, web-based learning tool, provides a practical overview of relevant competence for educators in our contemporary society. It consists of five uh, modules coupled with uh, a couple of practical workshops. The first of those modules frames critical digital literacies and gives an understanding of what critical digital literacy or the meaning of critical digital literacies goes through the framework and an understanding of each of the different dimensions and many other sub dimensions. The second two modules, so we see these modules as transversal modules, they you know, occur or they relate to multiple uh, different educational contexts from exploring instruments for the career integration of CDL as part of school policy, 
to the school as a context for continuous professional development. In many of these modules, there are opportunities to share practice, share materials, and engage with other uh, individuals in understanding how, how uh, tools for learning relate through to the you know, different educational contexts. The final two modules focused on uh, developing practical skills within specific contexts. So the first one focused on primary school environments for younger learners, and the second of the modules focus on secondary school environments. In both of those modules, there are practical case studies from you know, partners within the DETECT uh, project, coupled with collections of materials um, around learning design and learning um, tools for, for students uh, that are shared uh, or can be shared uh, between individuals engaging uh, with, the, with those, those materials. The final two uh, items on the SOLE uh, site are workshops. One of those focuses on specifically on data literacy and cultivating um, smart data schools. So understanding how to embed data literacy and data literacy practices uh, at, at critical levels within uh, school-based environments. And then the second one focuses on assessment of uh, critical digital literacy and critical digital literacy competence. So that's the first of the tools that we developed and constructed uh, through the project and it's free to access. So the second of the tools uh, that we developed through the project was an online toolkit which you can find uh, within the um, DETECT project website. So you can link through from there. Essentially, the online toolkit for the DETECT project provides educators with access to a range of resources that have been uh, placed within the database that link through either to specific levels of education um, or specific dimensions or a combination of those uh, two things. So individuals browsing the toolkit can find resources in a range of different languages uh, that relate directly to, to their particular context. So some of those um, tools will be existing frameworks or existing practical uh, materials that are, are present um, within the, the global web. And some of those tools will be tools that are case studies or other materials that have been developed within this project or other project, projects that individuals wish to share. In the toolkit uh, includes already existing original resources. It includes existing and original resources for teachers in development about critical digital literacies and includes educational scenarios, including lesson, lesson plans and a range of items of particular student groups. You can also, within that toolkit, suggest uh, resources that can be added uh, to the toolkit for sharing uh, within the wider network in order to create a community and a repository of uh, tools and materials that we link, link directly through to uh, the digital critical literacies uh, space. So in terms of next steps, I know we're very close to, to, to the end. So we're looking to continue to embed the framework in use, looking at different contexts for um, exploitation of the framework in practice, and understanding how we can move through from a development of educational skills, both within the educator space and within the uh, student space, through to being able to assess and understand where individuals have got to. We're also looking to explore some of the more complicated aspects further. So the progression of critical digital lit literacy skills between primary and secondary schools. So what are you looking for in relation to delivering an understanding of critical, criticality across the different educational levels, the assessment themselves of critical digital literacy competencies, and a translation of those critical digital literacy competencies into employability scenarios. So you know, what, where do we need to focus our efforts uh, in preparing today, today's uh, younger generation? So I think with that, I'm uh, finished, uh, Fabio, and I can hand back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Darren. I yeah. think uh, exactly 
exactly what we were expecting, you know, coming from the framework and the, the tools of the European Commission down to something practical, usable. And actually, uh, while I'm, um, I'm asking the, the participants, if you have questions, feel free to use the chat. Please uh, write your question or doubts. Uh, I have a question myself. I've seen uh, the Open Educational Resources uh, logo there. And uh, so all of this, I guess, it is available with open licenses, meaning that uh, anybody, apart from adding resources to your portal, I mean, in our community, we have many people which uh, would prefer typically work in, in Arabic, in uh, other languages. So I think if you can confirm that parts, uh, components of your work could be taken, of course, uh, legally uh, used uh, since they are uh, they are released with open licenses. And, uh, and I think it would be also great then to come back to you. So to let you know that they have been used. No? What's the policy there? Oh, I am there. Sorry, I was just ch checking whether I needed to mute. Yes, uh, Fabio. Yeah. So individuals can look at the resources, translate those resources, create their own resources, add those resources to the database and actually just share a good practice in relation to developing critical digital literacy skills in teachers and in, in students. I think just to say positively in relation to the to Fabio's talk as well, we use the selfie tool as a mechanism to understand that baseline in relation to, to digital competence and that baseline is really important so that you can build on that in terms of understanding how to use. Fantastic and in the meantime uh, just just uh, another question more than a more more than a question a comment I think we were able to to pro to, to pass the message that uh, uh, critical digital literacy embeds many things so, so somebody was asking in the chat are we talking about media literacy are we talking about uh, you know, usage rights. I think uh, the the right way to approach it, at least in my view, but I would like then to hear from uh, Alessandro and yourself before moving to the other panel. Here we're talking about a, a different approach, a general different approach to teaching with technology. It's not really practical skills. That we are not talking about somebody being able to, you know, um, to, to, to use uh, open licenses, for example. No, the thing is really being able to pass the message both through by teaching and as an example, no, with your behavior to, to students. So I wanted to, to know for, from Alessandro first and then from Darren, what do you think about this need for an holistic uh, set of understandings, which is not easy actually. It is not easy for citizens. It is even more difficult for teachers and educators because they have to pass it through to their learners. And um, well, later on, we're gonna hear from the ground. So if you have some advice to close this phase, this part of the of the webinar on what teachers could do, apart from using these tools that you were mentioned, Alessandro. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to really say that uh, was very interesting to have also an Erasmus project that is was developing a specific framework uh, on, on uh, critical digital literacy, uh, highlighting the many facade and, and the angles and the how to take it properly. Uh, to answer to your question, Fabio, I think uh, it's uh, really important to, con to consider that uh, when we want to transmit uh, this uh, attitude, uh, I would say, let's say and, um, this, uh, this approach, uh, this critical digital literacy, uh, there are three elements in my view. One, of course, are the skills. The skills are necessary uh, because uh, we need to know how to do the things, uh, how to control my keyboard, uh, how to open a, a certain browser instead of another. But then we need some knowledge. Knowledge is it's something more robust, uh, is uh, awareness, uh, is uh, really having media literacy and informatics as a subject and applying in, do in, uh, in the pedagogical use of ICT. I'm not speaking of the future uh, because uh, there is so much already digital technologies in day-to-day -day teaching and learning of teachers and students. So the second element is uh, the knowledge. So we have to really explain, not just uh, how to do something. The third element is uh, the attitude, uh, the personal attitude. And this is even more complex because we are human beings. Uh, we might use a WhatsApp 
an instant messaging system with very different approach and attitude. But your, our attitude, it's really uh, affecting the well-being of others. It's really affecting our communication. It's important really to, to rise, and we have millions of opportunity in a lesson to rise really a positive attitude. Be aware of who is on the other side. Are we talking the same language? Are, are we really the cultural expert? So it's a very big, more complex, but skills, knowledge, and attitude are pillars for critical digital literacy to me. Thanks, Thank Fabio. You. Thanks, Darren. Yeah, I think Alessandro has answered answered it in many respects, Fabio. I think, yeah, the technology side is, is just the how, you know, you can use a machine, that's fine, but actually it's the why, it's the, the kind of approach that you choose to use and developing that understanding that there are a range of different approaches, there are a range of different decisions you need to critically make as a practitioner is really important because without that, then individuals still exist within those closed licensing spaces and don't necessarily move to open because they don't understand those those reasons for why and and take those personal uh, decisions over their own um their own their own approaches fantastic thank you very much so we all seem to agree on the importance of the thing and on its uh, feasibility let's say with some effort and some uh, of course capacity building but now i would like to hear from actually educators on the ground. I know you are researchers and you are active, Alessandro and Darren, in this, uh, in this field. But uh, as, as usual, we would like to give the floor now to the educators, to people dealing every day with these issues in the in their classroom or in companies. So I pass the floor now to my colleague, Roberto. Roberto, you will moderate the, this uh, grassroots section. So floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Fabio. Hi, everybody. My name is Roberto Righi, and I'm a member of STEPS, which is a research center dealing with education, and we are helping uh, um, ETF uh, in the organization of, uh, of this webinar. So, yeah, I will, um, I will pass the floor very quickly to our first speaker, who is uh, Oksana. And uh, Oksana is a computer science uh, teacher at uh, Lyceum Sikhipsky uh, in Lviv, in Ukraine. And she's also an, uh, an ambassador of the ETF Community of Innovative Educators. And, uh, and uh, now, as Fabio said, we will have some practical examples on how digital, uh, uh, critical digital literacy can be applied uh, in, uh, in, educational, in the educational field. So please, Oksana, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Roberto. Um, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to, sh to share uh, some uh, of my experience of um, working with digital literacies. And uh, I'm hoping to share my screen and uh, talk a little bit about um, the Ukrainian experience of uh, digital literacies and um, how we keep learning going in this current very uncertain times and we uh, actually uh, have to still use the digital uh, mediated learning at the moment for the most part of Ukraine uh, due to the uh, war that is happening. So um, uh, actually uh, in most times I am combining a number of roles uh, among which being a computer science teacher is the most dear and important for me. But also uh, I work with curriculum development, uh, with online learning consultations and um, I'm promoting digital competence and innovations on different levels. Uh, and when we speak about digital in education, Quite often, uh, we have fears about something like uh, we see on the first picture. Uh, when there is a, a child sitting alone uh, in front of the screen, he's crooked, uh, he's not sitting straight, uh, his uh, little dinosaur uh, toy is abandoned and uh, because he's uh, all into the screen and honestly, it's not a good picture. Uh, I'd be the first to say this. We don't need digital technology to have our children uh, sitting like that. Uh, but there can be other way. 
And uh, when we see engagement, so when we see curiosity, when we see wonder that is happening when students are working with different kinds of different technologies. Hopefully this is happening uh, when they are working with others, when they are working on their projects, on their uh, share their passions, they develop their ideas and getting empowered by digital technology. It's when they learn and grow together. This is kind of digital technology we would, we would love to see in education. And uh, that's what we have been trying to do in Ukraine for quite a time. Uh, we had a great plan. Uh, actually, uh, we started the redesign of curriculum. Uh, it was based on DigComp, and we started to create a curricula both for primary school, for secondary school. Uh, we had uh, digital competence incorporated in all the subject areas, and we also had a, a separate subject, informatics or computer science, uh, with the learning outcomes for different levels of education. Um, of course, we understand that teachers need to be prepared to do all of that. So uh, we have created new professional standards for teachers. And uh, based on DigComp Edu, we develop a comprehensive digital professional development framework. It is quite a, a nice tool. It's very flexible. It has multiple levels. Uh, it has different tools and as all the aspects were taken into consideration. And uh, we also started with Selfie, which was piloted in many schools and it was ready to work uh, in full scale. Uh, we had all of this very systematically uh, planned and laid out. Uh, but uh, as you know, uh, life doesn't go smooth. Uh, really, first it was COVID uh, with the rapid transition to distance learning. And now we have war, which is again changing all our plans. And uh, all this nice picture was quite messed up. And um, it would be surprising if we didn't have to make amendments, if we didn't have to make changes uh, to our plans. Uh, but uh, while we had to cut on many extras, we also uh, knew that we had to focus on something very basic, on something very important and something that cannot be given up. That's learning. We had to do everything possible to keep the learning going. Uh, because we have to, uh, we, we cannot afford to lose education. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, whatever is happening, our children still are getting their education. They are getting the skills, they are getting the knowledge, they are getting the competences they need for a successful future. Uh, we cannot fail fail them even when the whole world is uh, shaking and changing. And I'm really proud to represent. Ukrainian educators today, because they have shown incredible determination to their duties and to their passions, along with the brave defenders of uh, our land. And uh, we learned probably the hard way, but, but still education is important. Education is not a dull duty. Uh, it has a value. It, it is worth fighting for. And we cannot take it for granted because so many things can disrupt education. And um, digital, digital technology, digital environment can provide a way to do that. Uh, it's uh, therefore very crucial uh, to have digital competences both for students and teachers, basically for every citizen, to make sure we are equipped to go online when we need to do that. And not just go online, but to do it effectively. Uh, to make sure that we are not losing uh, in uh, quality while going online and going digital. And we have learned that basic digital skills are not enough for that. Okay, we can know some software, we can know some buttons, but if we don't understand what to do with them, how to solve problems, how to be a critical thinker in the current age of misinformation and disinformation, uh, we know uh, that we need to apply digital skills in professional settings as teachers. It is way more than just knowing some tools. Uh, we need to uh, make sure that uh, our sphere, our profession is getting more effective, better serving uh, our students and their needs. Uh, it's way more than just digital literacy. 
it's about digital mindset, uh, being open to new opportunities, open for transformation uh, of things that are being done different ways uh, than they were done before. And this, the challenges that we face are often not just technical, but technical and digital can be a way of solving these challenges. Uh, quite often when we face uh, uncertainties, we think that uh, it is best to go back uh, to something that was happening before. But we now know that it's not okay to just go back. Uh, we need to rebuild something better. We need to make sure that we are using the opportunities to transform our education, uh, especially after COVID and in our case, uh, after the war. We need to make sure that our education is being better than it was in 2000, I don't know, 18 or 16 or whatever. Because um, I don't think that anyone can say that the education was working perfectly before COVID or before the war. Uh, we all wanted to make some changes. And we, we know that now that digital can make sure that we try to move forward with these changes. Uh, we know that uh, control and requirements actually do not work. They didn't work before, they don't work in digital environment. And we know that digital environment can show very clearly that control is not working. When we ask everyone to turn on their cameras without taking into consideration their different uh, situations, their different um, challenges they are facing, uh, or, for example, when we ask everyone to be present on an online les lesson or while they, they can have different uh, situations in their lives, for example, there can be an air alarm or there is a lack of electricity, we cannot, we cannot make every student uh, come to an online lesson because of their uh, own limitations. Or when there is a time difference student move to another country and he or she cannot join the lesson in his or her school. But it doesn't mean we have to uh, let go of the education uh, they can receive in their schools. Or a challenge of academic integrity, uh, which is uh, quite difficult to deal with uh, in online learning. And um, again, it's not about using bad or wrong tools. It's about the attitudes. And digital uh, learning has shown us that we need to think about those challenges, about those issues more creatively than just go back uh, as it was before. Um, on the other hand, uh, we found out that a lot of things work very nicely, both in online learning and in uh, offline as well. It's about feedback, how you are talking to your students, how you're providing the guidance, how you're using formative assessment, how you uh, help them focus on their learning, not just focus on the uh, curriculum or, or covering a textbook, but actually helping them to learn to learn, how to make sure that they keep the passion for learning despite everything that's going on. Uh, it's way more than just some square roots or formulas or even computer coding very dear to me. Uh, but um, these priorities should be set for their future, being able to focus on learning and uh, focus on achieving despite uh, all the circumstances. Another thing that is uh, very important is flexibility, both for teachers and students. We need to make sure that we are able to uh, say no to quite a lot of requirements that are really not important. When we uh, say that we are not going to cover all the textbook, that maybe we are going to cover some part of it just because of new reality, but we are still focusing on something very important. And that's uh, our students and their needs uh, that should be uh, put first. Uh, in order to do that, again, it's not about digital, skills. It's about the mindset, quite open to any changes, quite open to um, the opportunities that are opening with those changes. In order to help teachers be ready to all these challenges, be ready to use the tools to create solutions, 
uh, we have uh, come uh, with uh, a multiple um, selection of different um, offers. Um, when we are talking about some basic digital literacy, this um, is best served when uh, we have some face-to-face -face co communication with our teachers who may be uh, well, um, scared uh, to use new technology. This is best served when we have face-to-face -face contact. But a lot of uh, instructions uh, work best when they are recorded. For instance, uh, when we have uh, some how-to guides that can be viewed um, in different times uh, in flexible time and pace. Big ideas, uh, like we are talking uh, today, uh, can uh, go through uh, massive online courses when teachers, again, can go back to some important uh, topics, can re-watch re uh, the videos, uh, go to different uh, links to explore the topic. But when we are coming to practical applications of those things, most important is to create spaces to practice, to share your um, discoveries, uh, to share your mistakes, your errors, and to reflect on all of that. And this is happening best in a blended environment when we have facilitated courses, when we have a group of teachers working together and uh, finding their way uh, of using some new tools or new uh, or old tools in new situations. Uh, also, we have some innovative formats like chatbots, uh, which are used by teachers to find answers to, uh, you know, very practical day-to-day uh, -day, uh, problems when you type in some, some very simple question and you are getting some set of links or some set of uh, videos uh, to, to explore further. And uh, what is most important in all of that is that teachers learn best from other teachers and they learn best with other teachers. When they have this learning community that is ready to share their experiences and support one another in finding ways to serve our students uh, the best we can. And uh, coming to the end of what I wanted to share with you today, uh, I would like to emphasize that digital literacy uh, is way more complex than just knowing some buttons in some software. Uh, it is being able to live uh, in a digital world. And uh, for the teachers, this task is uh, double. Uh, it is more than living and working digitally and working effectively, um, utilizing all the pedagogy that we have been using uh, for quite a long time uh, before today. Uh, because our task is also raising the digital citizens of tomorrow, the ones who can not just use technology, but create the technology of tomorrow. Uh, actively and effectively and uh, with respect and empathy uh, to make sure that uh, our tomorrow is better than our today. And uh, with that, I really thank you for your attention and wish you good luck in building digital critical literacies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Oksana. Thank you so much also for these words of hope. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to see that um, there are many, um, many things in common and, uh, and you, you raise the attention and the focus on uh, what Alessandro and, and Darren was talking about uh, in the, let's say, theoretical part. But you put also the focus on the real life, on the practical things and uh, on the importance also of keep going on with uh, all these activities in spite of uh, all the practical problems and practical issues opening, hoping that tomorrow will be, um, will be better. I also see many um, questions. I would keep them for, um, for the last part after the end of uh, the, the other contribution. And uh, I would leave, would leave the floor now to our friend uh, Carol De Britos, who is a teacher at the uh, Escola Virolai, the Virolai School in, uh, in Barcelona, in Spain. And I'm sure that also from her practical experience, uh, we will have a lot of uh, things in common with the, with the other interventions that we, that we will be helpful to, to discuss afterwards. Thank you, Carol, the floor is yours.
Thank you, Roberto, and thank you, everyone. Um, it's great being here and also finding so many similarities, although we are from different countries and we have different uh, situations and different contexts, it's great to see that we all think the same and we all agree in so many aspects. So um, I'm a class teacher, I'm a teacher, so what I come here with is actual materials that we have developed in my school with our students. Before I start, I want to give you a little bit of uh, context of where my school is and how it is organized, because I know that schools are organized in different ways depending on the country where you are. So my school, I don't know if you or how many of you have already been to Barcelona, okay, but my school is called the Escola Briolai. It's at the top of the hill next to Parque by Gaudi. And we have students uh, that go from ages zero. So we have kindergarten, preschool, until uh, baccalaureate, 18 years old. This means that we have these preschool kindergarten schools, we have primary, we have secondary, we have baccalaureate, and we also have uh, all the students that are studying vocational studies, studies okay? So give, this gives us a range of different ages and lets us organize and see how effective everything that we are is in the future, and also gives us chances of collaboration between students of different ages, as you will see. Our school is not a private school, but it's, ne it's near a public school, something in between. Families pay a little bit, but also some part comes from the government, so we are something in between, which is something really popular in Catalonia, where Barcelona is. And uh, Escola Virolai was founded in the 60s, okay? So why is uh, critical digital literacy is important for us. So what we want as a school, we want to promote students' reflection and critical thinking, allowing them to exercise, allowing these students to exercise their responsible freedom, okay? So in order to achieve this freedom, we must to have in consideration the development of their ability to think. That is why critical thinking, okay, comes in, in the name. The self-knowledge, you will see that this is really important for us as we start every year, um, with a project um, in which we help students to better know themselves, better know these different faces of the uh, polyhedron that they, they are. Um, also, we have to have in mind the circumstances around them. We have students from, that come from different backgrounds that have different situations, so this is also important. And also the assumption that becoming a responsible citizen is a result of a progressive learning process, which as I've said, because we have students from all the ages possible, then we can see this progress and we can plan this progress. So having all this in mind, can the critical digital literacy um, help us? Uh, in this process? Definitely the answer is yes. And that is one of the reasons why we became part of this DETECT project that the Darren was talking about um, a while ago. Also, to give you a little bit of context, we know that giving tools to students, giving laptops to the students doesn't make them more competent, okay? But having these resources definitely helps because you have access to all these uh, materials, okay? So when they are really young, from zero to six year olds, our students have iPads in class, okay? And they do coding and robotics. Then when they are older in primary, we, we move into uh, Android tablets and we continue with this coding and robotic. It's in uh, grade four, okay? When they are nine years old when they give them their first laptop, although they have been using them previously in class, but they start owning their own laptop, yes, and they continue using tablets. They continue like this in uh, the upper grades of primary and also in secondary. And in secondary, we also introduce the cell phones as a tool for learning. So the first project that I wanted to talk about is this one. The name is in Catalan, okay? So don't try to, if you know a little bit of Spanish, you want to understand it because it, it's a different language. Um, it's called the cell phone, myself and others, okay? You will see that there are some colored bubbles. These bubbles represent the different dimensions that Darren showed us in that framework that we developed with the DETECT project, okay? So within this project, we mainly developed or tried to develop the digital citizenship of our students as well as this digital well-being and safety. This project was implemented or is done at the beginning of year six of primary education. Although when you see the characteristics, the objectives and you see the activities, depending on uh, your specific context, you can apply it in first grade of secondary when they are 13 more or less, or even later. 
So, okay, it's a self-discovery project. It's one of the projects that is part of this self-knowledge um, phase or self-knowledge uh, moment at the beginning of the year. And you will see that there are individual tasks, small group tasks, and big group tasks, class group tasks. First of all, we start by discussing who from our students in grade six already owns a cell phone. In our case, we saw that by the Christmas time of grade six is the moment where most of our students start owning their own cell phones because they ask them, they uh, Santa or the three wise men, which, which we already also have here, um, gives it to our students. Then um, once we know how many of the students actually or uh, learn own a cell phone, uh, we reflect on, okay, so those of you who don't have one, why do you want one? And why do you actually own one? And maybe some of them don't want a cell phone, why don't you? Okay, so this is a reflecting phase and it helps us to gather some data and some information about um, the students. Then we put all this information together in, into numbers. So we have real data, okay? And we analyze and we discuss about the results. And this is an example, I'm afraid it's in Catalan, okay? But this is an example uh, from two years ago, for example. This is a comparison. I, I'm not going to read it, okay? Uh, if you can review the presentation, then you will be able to compare data, okay? But this is a comparison between two years ago and last year. Um, and how things can change from one group to another. Also COVID changed things. Also the amount of students we had in class because of uh, post COVID measures can change things. Okay, but making sure that you really know your group, that you really know the, your students and if they own one device or not, um, if you know the context, then it can help you to redefine, redesign the activities that you're going to do. And here are some of the reasons why they want to have a cell phone, okay, to use WhatsApp, to download games without having to ask for permission. Don't forget that grade six students in our school already own their own laptops. So why are they so eager uh, to have this device if they, will if they already have another one that gives you all the same options, okay, to watch YouTube or TikTok videos, to make phone calls, okay. And those who maybe were afraid or weren't so sure that they wanted one answered that they are afraid that they would use it too much. So they are really aware because they have heard that addiction is a problem. Um, maybe someone steals my personal information, someone can steal it from me or I can lose it, my parents can use it as a punishment, okay, I might break it, my parents can control me, okay, so they are already aware of which are the possible dangers. Another part of the, another activity within this project is talking about the real influencers in their life. We know that um, after once in Instagram and YouTube and TikTok, there are many influencers, popular people who have some sort of influence in our, in our students and not only in our students, in, our, in ourselves too. So then, we, so with an activity, we reflect on who really has a, an impact on their decisions, on how they act on how they respond, on what they like. And we compare this real influence with the other types of influence. And here they mention their family, their teachers, their parents, their friends, the soccer trainers, whoever, okay? And here you have some examples um, of what they, they may draw. The larger the bubble, the more influence that person or that group of people has on the kit and the closer they are also to. Then we talk about ego, okay? Because as you may know, social networks are really connected to ego, to giving likes, okay? So what is your ego? Why do we need to be liked? Does reality of who we are always match how we really feel or what we show in social media? Do we worry too much about what other things are used, okay? If you want to see more specific activities on how we do this, every phase that I'm talking about, you will find them in the SOLET, which is the online course that Darren um, introduced before. And obviously we have the point of view of psychologists from T programs and also from the psychologists of the school, okay, about ego. And then we draw some conclusions. 
We complement this project with other activities, other interventions, other materials throughout the year. This is something that we do at the beginning of the year in grade six, but throughout the rest of the year, for example, we read the book, The Julian, Julian, the Julian chapter, which is the second part of the Wonder series. And it's a great book because you see the same story, but from the point of view of the, uh, of the boy who is bullying August. Okay, so you see the other side of the situation. And you will see that here we, I will talk about this joke, joke or harassment, which is a project that secondary students do that I will talk about now. And we connect this project with, with the, this other one. And we talk about cyberbullying with the police department, for example. Okay, they come and they um, talk about oh, cyberbullying to our students. The final, how we put everything together, what is the final product, how do our students show that they have really learned something that they, this it has been a meaningful project by designing um, some posters that we hang throughout the school talking about social media about how to make a good use of the cell phone and as you can see they include recommendations about ego okay about why you like um, what you need to like um, the others to like you about ergonomics about addiction they um, they give the recommendations about different aspects. The second project, this is more focused on secondary education and is the one called Joke or Harassment, Broma o Abus. It also um, touches digital citizenship and digital well-being and safety, okay? And we plan this project in the second year of secondary education. We're talking about kids that are age 13, well, more 14 years old, okay? It's also a self-discovery project that we do at the beginning of the year. And as a previous one, it has individual tasks, small group tasks, and large group tasks. Here, we go a step further from the previous project I, I showed you, okay? Here, we introduced or we, first of all, gather what they already know about these online problems or situations, about cyberbullying, about privacy, about talking to strangers, about viral videos and what consequences may they have, about digital identity, about spam, etc. As you can see, we give them different situations, first of all, to and ask them some questions uh, so that we can start the conversation so that we can see what they already what they already know, what they think. And what is important in this case is to give them maybe not real situations, because all these situations were designed by the teachers, but making sure that these are situations that have um, a language that is as real as possible to their context, a visual language also, and also the, not only the written language, but and also a digital language. Here we have to use uh, screenshots or situations that may take place in TikTok, in Instagram, in WhatsApp, okay, which is our platforms apps that they are using. If, for example, we presented them with a situation that takes place in Facebook, I'm afraid they won't connect they wouldn't connect with it and they would they wouldn't then um have um interest in, in that project okay. sorry carol we are yes. we are a little bit late so i would ask you if okay. you can come to the conclusion in one minute if you can. one minute okay yeah. i'll do my best so we also analyze cases and here we have a cyberbullying case yes in which they have to analyze the the situation from the aggressor point of view from the victim's point of view from the spectators okay from the audience uh, of this situation too, and from the followers, and then they have to define what type of, type of aggression this one is. And the final products of this, of this uh, project are two. One connected to the project the grade six students were doing, they designed videos that the grade six students will watch. And then the other product is a mentorship with grade four students. We're talking in both cases, they are primary students, because grade four is the first year um, in which we give them their own laptop. I also have more projects to show you, but I think that we can share the presentation with everyone and everyone can see it when they have enough time, when they have some time. But here, just one, word, one sentence about which one. This is how we introduce this first laptop um, and a little bit the schedule that we have. Um, in this project, not only students and teachers are involved, but also families. OK, which is something that I think is important, getting families involved in this learning process. OK, and then assessment is also important. And we have to make sure that uh, 
you specifically assess these competences, okay, but also invisibly or integrate this assessment in within the other projects, okay, and here I had some rubrics. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carol. Uh, and sorry again for interrupting you, but we, of course, as, as it usually happens, we accumulated some, some delay and uh, we would like to, to run a little bit faster. And uh, so I will not comment because I, I want to save time and uh, <laughs> give uh, the floor to Osvaldo Di Cuffa, who is uh, the, the principal of uh, the uh, Sassetti Peruzzi Vocational School in Florence, in Italy. And uh, here we have another um, uh, point, uh, common point with, with the detect project, because also the school was part of this project. And uh, please, Osvaldo, sorry in advance if you can try to be as <laughs> short as possible. Sorry again. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon to everybody. Thank you, Roberto. I'll try to be the, uh, the more uh, quick I, I can, only to introduce our activity into, uh, into the, the DETECT project. Um, two words about our school. We are in Florence. We are a upper intermediate high school and uh, with two main buildings, one just in, the, in Florence and uh, the second one just outside Florence. And our values uh, or the values of our school uh, work is well-being at school, inclusion and didactic and technological innovation. Inclusion most of all, because we are a school with uh, 1300 students from 14 to 19 years old and uh, half of them are not Italians. So inclusion is uh, one of our, uh, of our special values, our, our topic. And for this didactical and technological innovation is really important also to get a real inclusion. Uh, we have three main courses, uh, three specializations, and uh, the, the first one is a commercial service web community, it's a vocational course. The second one is a health and social care services, vocational course two. And uh, the third one is a technical high school for tourism. Um, we were a school that formed for, for three, 30 years uh, a lot of employers uh, that uh, worked in uh, commercial offices of hundreds of small and medium enterprises in Florence. But at the beginning of this century, we have a, a, a big crisis uh, because the, the, the offer of job for our students decreased a lot. Uh, of course, even uh, related with the development of new technologies. And so companies uh, started looking for uh, more and different skilled workers. And then we reflected about a change uh, in the, the offer uh, of the study for our students. Uh, in the, in uh, 2016, uh, 2016, the government started a reform and uh, we were allowed to, um, to organize uh, our own course for, uh, for, for our students. And we decided to improve digital skills in commercial studies because the, these were the, the skills that uh, companies asked us to train on our students. And uh, in particular, we developed a curriculum based on digital business administration, web marketing, social media for business. This was a success for us because we increased again the, the students in our school and, uh, the, and because they were interested into these uh, kind of activities that can become a new uh, way of work in, uh, in, uh, in business administration. Um, for this reason, not only for this reason, but for this reason in particular, we focused our attention on critical digital literacy because uh, working uh, on uh, students that can be, uh, can do of these kind of skills, uh, their jobs for the future, 
critical digital, digital literacy assumes a, 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 an important role for them and because they have to be awarded about uh, the risks and the potential of using digital uh, technologies. So um, we, uh, we saw a, a big opportunity in joining the Erasmus project that, uh, that Darren uh, showed so well before, illustrated so well before. So I am not uh, going to talk about the project, but we uh, decide to focus uh, on two uh, main subjects into the big, uh, um, the big framework of critical digital, digital literacy. And we, uh, or, uh, we uh, developed two activities together with the researcher of uh, Florence University uh, involved in the, the project. And the two, uh, the two activities we developed were about real and virtual, the, 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 um, the relation between real and virtual worlds and about fake news. The first activity, the one with uh, real and virtual, um, arises from the need to deal with uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, to deal with an issue so fundamental like relation between real and virtual in our student life because they are so um, emerged in uh, uh, real in uh, virtual uh, worlds that can um, lose the, 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 the touch with a real life. Uh, we worked on, um, in a class of 24 uh, students and the, 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 the issue of this, uh, of this activity was uh, to make them reflect about their uh, relation with real words and virtual words. Uh, we divided them into two groups and they, uh, after, a, after a brainstorming about what they knew uh, on this, about this, uh, uh, this subject, they were uh, divided into two groups and they had to imagine, uh, the first group had to imagine a country of real, the, the real world, what can be uh, a world without any digital issues, any digital technology. The other group had to imagine uh, the opposite, uh, a world completely virtual. And uh, they analyzed and discussed about them, what can be a world without technology, what can be a world with only uh, technology. And then they, um, present their uh, work to the other group and uh, open a debate about the, the opportunity and the risk of uh, a world without uh, technology and the world completely uh, based on uh, technology. Uh, then the, the, another step of the, of the project was to elaborate a questionnaire to uh, investigate uh, how uh, our students are involved with uh, the with the um, virtual worlds and how how uh, virtual is present in their life, and the, the, the they their conclusion was that one of the problem that can uh, make them lose contact with the, the real life is their excessive time that they spend on mobile phone. Um, and they uh, try to advise, to, be, to make aware their, uh, their schoolmate about this problem, uh, producing four digital storytellings uh, which describe an ideal day of a person without the mobile. What can uh, he do? Uh, what can he do without a mobile phone? And this uh, from different points of view, from the point of view of himself or herself, or herself, from the point of view of a parent, from the point of view of his or uh, her pet, and uh, uh, of his or her boy or girlfriend. Uh, These are examples of the, of the questionnaire 
end of the storytelling they elaborate. Uh, so uh, at the end of this, uh, of this activity, we tried to make them reflect about uh, uh, their relation with the, 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 the virtual world and the, the real world. And uh, they, they appreciated this critical approach with the, the technology. The second, the second activity was about fake news. We worked with two classes, a class of the first year, so 14 years old, and a class of the fourth class, so about 16, 17 years old. They worked at the same activity, and uh, then we um, compared the, the different results of their activity. Um, even if activity was made in different phases, the first phase was about a study on what uh, fake news are, um, searching, uh, searching uh, um, news and, um, and materials about uh, fake news on, on the internet, watching some movies like Shattered Glass and, uh, and discussing about themselves and then producing a checklist of what is uh, a fake news, what are the, um, the, the, the problem about fake news, why some fake news are uh, created. And the second phase is a, a, an activity one, the second phase was an activity one uh, in which they were involved into the production of fake news by the, the, the creation of a, a new cast, a program, a, a news program, and uh, made only of, uh, by fake news. So they, these are the, the phases of the, of, the, of the project, of the activity. So they worked on their own reflection uh, on uh, the difficult, the difficulty to um, to uh, understand uh, what they if what they find on the internet is real or is a fake news. Maybe because uh, even because the fake news are so well created that uh, of course uh, seem uh, seem real. This is the, the video they read. These are these are example of the checklists they create to discuss about fake news. And these are the, 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 the news program they, uh, they produced um, by trying to be, uh, to try to be the, 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 some uh, journalists, uh, but working only with fake news. And uh, they, the, even they, um, even in this activity, they uh, had good, uh, that we, we had a good, good uh, feedback from them because they were, uh, they understood how to reconnoise a fake news and uh, how uh, we are so immersed in a world uh, in which it's so difficult to uh, separate real news from uh, fake news. Then we try to uh, make them uh, improve this kind of subject by creating a, um, an online newspaper of the school in which they can, uh, in this case, uh, work on real news and uh, to avoid the, the, the to to share uh, to share instead fake news. I hope I've been so. Uh, quick uh, en enough quick and i thank you all for your attention thank you so much osvaldo thank you so much uh, i i knew there uh, there was a lot of things to share all of them are very interesting uh, we just have to come to the conclusion sorry but because uh, of of the de of the delay but i'm also happy to see there are still 150 participants so that means uh, that all the presentations were very interesting for 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 everybody so thank you so much i i I'm, I'm want, just wanted to underline the importance on this fake news aspect because it was mentioned also during this first speech by by alessandro and it's one of the connected with one of the dimension of the of the detect framework and uh, i also see from the from the comments in chat that 
this is in some way in hot topic. Uh, it's also con concerns the digital well-being and so on. So thank you so much for all your presentations. I think uh, there's a lot to, to share and uh, these are very interesting practical stories that could be learned by the others and shared with, uh, with the others. So thank you again. And uh, I will give you the floor once again to Fabio for the for the conclusions. I don't know if we have still time for the questions. We well, tried to answer them, but thank you, Roberto, and thank you to the three speakers. Actually, we we prefer to go to take a bit more time because actually they were so interested and interesting. And thank you also in advance for sharing them. Uh, all the participants will receive the, the presentations. I think we got actually very different uh, perspectives. And the good thing is that in the in the chat, we did not get many questions, but a lot of comments that actually complemented each other. So I think uh, this is one of those uh, lucky webinars where you can get uh, a bit late without having to, you know, not to respond uh, to questions. Now, while I, I, I mentioned the four ideas uh, as conclusions uh, that uh, I, I'm taking, uh, with me after this webinar, I would like uh, uh, to call for the last uh, Mentimeter uh, survey. Again, you can see in the in the chat uh, um, a link. So please go to that link. And this is uh, uh, well. Actually, before we ask you if you knew what digital what critical digital literacy were, and now the question is: uh, Have you learned more about critical digital literacies? And actually. Um, of course, there is a lot to learn and uh, there are many aspects, so it's impossible in uh, one hour and a half or a bit more to really uh, touch upon all of them. But while you vote, please uh, do so in the, in the, through the chat. I will basically uh, pick up uh, four concepts uh, which actually have um, impressed me. Actually, I, I, I've been working myself quite a lot in the area of digital literacies of educators and critical digital literacies. So the first aspect is uh, teachers teamwork, which came out many times, uh, especially I remember the fact that teachers, uh, when it comes to critical things, uh, to difficult things in terms of attitudes, uh, they prefer to learn from teachers. I think it was Oksana to, to put this forward and there was a whole debate in the chat on whether we can find some research uh, uh, supporting this. I think we see this in daily life and uh, there were a few links uh, shared, but I think this is already an important thing when it comes to how to develop actually critical digital capacities of teacher. The second one is the importance of attitude. So if you look at the continuum, skills, knowledge, and attitude, it seems that the, you know, the, the, the arrow goes on attitude. You can be skilled, you can know everything about uh, surveillance, capitalism, uh, algorithm, everything, but if you don't have the right attitude when you use technology, that will not work. So acting as an example, so also very important and not, all, not always uh, stressed so much. Then I liked very much the big ideas concept. Somebody was mentioning it in connection to MOOCs. So when teaching digital literacy, critical thinking and critical digital literacies, I think educators should not be afraid of thinking big. So actually big, the concept of big ideas is maybe even more interesting than small tricks in terms of social media use and all these things. And finally, the, the, the fact that uh, critical digital literacy must be a lifelong uh, commitment of teachers. We heard about uh, schools uh, which go from pre-primary to secondary school. And I think this is, uh, this is quite important and uh, it doesn't uh, start and stop. So it should start as early as possible. And I really appreciate it very much. The critical questions about the mobile by Carol, as well as the the thing I noticed in all the experience where was, which maybe is the fifth uh, point, is how much students were actually producing knowledge. So critical digital literacy is also a way for, for the educator to take a step back and to let students uh, experiment, make mistake and, and produce, in some cases even co-produce. And from what I could see, actually, the, the videos that we did not have the time to watch, uh, the quality and the, the style was uh, quite interesting. So I will look at them later on. 
So this is all from my side, from the, from the Mentimeter, I saw that uh, the very great majority learned something through this webinar. So I think this is uh, actually the objective was achieved. Yes, uh, I don't know who is the person who said no, but it's always good to have one who says no, because it means that the Mentimeter is true. So it doesn't, you know, it's not, uh, it's not made up. So I would like to thank all the speakers actually. And uh, I think we, man we managed to, to, to work on such a, uh, I would say multi-dimensional issue. Thank you very much also from the, the tech project uh, contributions. Actually, it's good to see also European project focusing so strongly there. And thank you, uh, Oksana as well for your uh, on the ground uh, reflections from uh, Ukraine. All from our side, just remember you will, uh, when uh, we will receive a follow-up messages. So remember, if you haven't, uh, please register into the community of Innovative Educators so you can hear the, the news about the next activities. In November, in the next days, actually, we are going to announce uh, the finalists of the New Learning Award. As you know, we run a massive collection of uh, innovative teaching practices. We received more than 700. We have now we are now done with the evaluation. We have ten finalists, so in the very next days uh, you will receive uh, an email update uh, with these uh, uh, finalists, and the, all the community and everybody will be able to vote for them through through the web. So we try to uh, instill a bit of uh, crowd uh, crowd voting uh, from the community. Thank you very much to all the participants, still 142. So you bear the for 15 minutes more. It means that the issue is really hot as uh, we expected. Thank you, Roberto, and uh, for your fantastic moderation. Again, to all the speakers and see you online in the next webinars and in the ETF community of innovative educators. Bye to all. Thank you, everybody. Bye, thank you.